I mention set theory a lot in my videos, and while I have an 8 part series on it that teaches it step by step, the goal of this video is to explain sets in a single video using the geometric view of harmony we learned about in the first video in this series on music as geometry. Using our geometric perspective, we can simply define a set as a particular shape. For example, an equilateral triangle shape is the shape of the augmented set. This uneven triangle is the shape for the major chord set. What's important to realize is that a set is a general term that encompasses all of the manifestations of these shapes. We can rotate or transpose these pitches, but because the shape is still the same, it's still the same set. Think of the term set to mean the set of all augmented chords, or the set of all major chords. This means a chord is considered part of the major chord set, whether it's an A major chord, B major chord, C major chord, etc., and regardless of if it's in root position, first position, or second position, and it also doesn't matter what octave the pitches are in, or if there are repetitions in the voicing. The major chord set refers to major chords generally. To really understand set theory, you have to become familiar with the process of inverting sets, which means to flip them across an axis. We discussed how some sets are symmetrical and map onto themselves when flipped, but for non-symmetrical shapes like the major triad shape, inverting the shape gives us a mirror image of the original shape that we call the inversion pair. To invert a set, we draw an axis through the middle of the pitch circle, and we move the pitches to their mirrored locations on the other side of the axis. Pitches on the line like C stay put. Since G is one step to the left of the axis, it will be mirrored on the other side one step to the right of the axis, and E will be mirrored two steps away. This gives us an F minor chord. This shows us that major and minor triads are inversion pairs that have the same essential shape, they're just flipped versions of each other. In set theory, we label each kind of shape with either fort numbers that use a dash or spread numbers that use a decimal. You can watch the videos on how each labeling system works, but in short, the first number tells us how many pitches are in the set, and the second number tells us where that set lies on the spectrum of sets with its number of pitches. Sets that are inversion pairs are labeled as the same number because they are the same shape, but are distinguished between each other with either an A or a B. Giving sets labels allows us to identify any set of pitches using a set calculator. So why is all this useful to know? When we analyze music, sometimes it's hard to intuitively tell if a chord or scale that appears has a novel shape, or if it's the same shape as another chord presented in a different mode or voicing. For instance, Scriabin used all of these contrasting chords. and yet all belong to his mystic set, labeled 6.2. It's difficult to tell because they're all in different modes from each other, and the last one uses the inversion pair of the popularly known version of the mystic chord, yet they all belong to the same set and would be visualized as the same fundamental shape. In summary, set theory gives us a framework for understanding any collection of pitches. Ultimately, understanding sets is useful because we hear sets. A good composer like Scriabin was able to unify his harmonic language by limiting his harmony to a few distinct sets, and yet explored several ways of manifesting them. Our ears fundamentally hear the geometric divisions of the octave. Our geometric perspective of set theory allows us to label and categorize any chord or scale so that we can understand the entire world of harmony. Thank you all for watching. Please join the Discord, like, comment, subscribe, and consider donating.